Digital transformation is among the priorities of the Marcos administration as a tool for economic growth. Now here to join us to discuss their initiatives in forwarding this cause, we have with us live here on studio, EPLDT President and CEO V-Boy Henwino. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Diego, for having me. And I think uh, we really have an interesting topic right now because I, uh, you are a leader in digital transformation of business now. Uh, tell us why this is really important and what does it really take in acquiring technology? Uh, does it guarantee resilience for a business? Thanks, Diego. I think it's a very interesting topic that a mm. lot of enterprises now are very curious yes, about. Yes. Um, and, and I think digital transformation is a strategic imperative of any enterprise. Mm -hmm. Our group CEO, Al, Al Panilio, yes. always says, you can't use an old map to navigate a new world, <laughs> right? So right. for us to be able to remain resilient, to be able to ensure that we are one with change mm -hmm. with regards to anything um, customer related, yes. um, we have to be able to transform ourselves. That's right. But it starts with the business outcomes. What does the okay. business want to do? Um, do they want to uh, reduce cost? Do they want to be more efficient? Mm -hmm. Do they want to be more customer-centric? And I think our job as EPLDT would be to be able to match the technologies that are available in the market mm -hmm. to the outcomes that these ah, enterprises so would so want. It's like it's customizable. It for is. Okay, interesting. It is. Then. Yes, yes. Because you know sometimes. Um, the problem is uh, technology drives how business should be run, that's but right, it's right. always uh, the, other way, the other way around. Business defines what they want and technology follows suit. That's interesting you said it's customizable, but a lot of people have been asking, what if I only want one thing uh, for my business and I don't really need this now? So that's uh, very interesting. Now, how important are ICT solutions uh, yeah. today when setting up or sustaining a business? And how does PLDT Enterprise and EPLDT enhance businesses through cloud systems, data centers, and other innovations? Thank you, Diego. Um, EPLDT is the ICT arm of the PLDT group of companies. Mm. So our role is to be able to offer solutions to enterprises and position ourselves as the okay. digital transformation partner for these customers. Our suite of services include cloud, cybersecurity mm -hmm. and data centers. Oh, okay. Um, so when you talk about cloud, we offer a suite of uh, different uh, services mm -hmm. coming from our vendor partners like Amazon, mm. Microsoft, Google, Salesforce, and the like. Uh, cybersecurity is also very, very important. You cannot mm -hmm. just move certain applications into the cloud without ensuring protection around yes, it. Yes, yes, that's right. And in the Philippines, I'm happy to, um, to, to tell you, Diego, that we are the largest data center operator in the country today. Mm -hmm. We have 10 data centers in the Philippines today. Uh, we are building our 11th data center in Santa Rosa, which okay. will go live by the second half of uh, next year. And um, the size of this data center is huge. It's 50 megawatts. Um, so think of it as um, 15 to 20 huge malls oh, uh, wow. that, uh. Is being, uh, that, uh, that is being consumed by this data center yes. in terms of power. Um, so when you say all of these applications and services move to the cloud, yes. that needs to be housed somewhere, and our data centers will be housing all of these applications that are moving to the cloud. Yes, you, you mentioned the cloud a number of times. And of course, uh, the question on most business owners is, how safe is uh, uh, your business solutions uh, from cyber attacks? I mean, what are you doing now to improve uh, cybersecurity? Thank you. Very important uh, question, Diego. Cybersecurity is very, very important. In a recent survey mm. uh, made with uh, chief information officers of large enterprises, resilience and cybersecurity is actually number one on their list. Mm. So for PLDT Smart, we're ensuring that we're investing a lot of know-how and technology to ensure that we protect yes. uh, our network and our platforms. But if you look at it in terms of cybersecurity, there are five accepted pillars. Okay. Uh, the first one is identification. Uh, the second one would be to, um, to, be to, to protect, mm -hmm. to detect, to, recover, to, to respond, and then to recover. So these are the five pillars. And I think if we partner with EPLDT, we can also cover a whole suite of solutions that ensures protection for an enterprise mm, okay. when they move their applications to the cloud. 
So you're saying, sir, it, it really depends what kind of business you are in. Yes. And that's how the security will adapt to that kind of business. Th that's correct. Um, what we propose to our customers is to run a basic audit or what we okay. call a security posture assessment. Okay. It's a simple audit that allows us to go to a company, mm -hmm. um, see where their vulnerabilities are, and okay. offer solutions on how to protect and uh, reinforce their assets. Um, you know, it's funny, Diego, it's like putting a security guard to be able to man your critical assets yes, at home. Yes, yes. Um, the same token for moving applications to the cloud, you need to put some security around it. Um, and those are the services that EPLDT offers. Uh, so it's, it's like saying like uh, in the olden times you had your physical address and physical yeah. information and you had your security guard. Yes. guard. Now that you're moving into the cloud yes. and being more modern, you now have all these pillars in place. That yes, you yes. And, um, and these threat actors are getting very, very creative. Yes, right? they are. Because they are. Um, unlike a physical threat where you know where it's coming from, yes. when you move things to the cloud, it's basically, it can come from anywhere. That's true. That's so true. the protection required should be greater. Well, that, that, thank you for your reassurance. I'm sure a lot of uh, business owners are finding this very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, in fact, yeah. they're saying it's not a matter of if, but when, right? Yeah, so that's right, that's it, right. it's really incumbent on enterprises to Correct. protect themselves. I agree. And uh, let's talk about ESG or environmental, social, and governance in assessing the sustainability of businesses. How do PLDT Enterprise and EPLDT help companies with their ESG strategies? in order to gain investor confidence and reduce, of course, operational costs. That's very important. Very important. Yeah. Um, I can speak on behalf of the data centers that we have. Okay. Uh, we are a very big consumer of power. And um, when you consume power, I think there are a lot of questions on uh, greenhouse gas emissions yes. and where you source your power. Mm -hmm. um, I think for us, that's very important. So we try to approach it in two ways. One is in terms of energy sourcing. Okay. We ensure that our data centers run with at least 20 to 30% of renewable power to ensure that there's the proper energy mix in yes. the data center. And secondly, in terms of running our own operations, we ensure that energy efficiency is top of mind. Okay. And we are measuring this through the following. Um, number one is what we call power usage effectiveness. How efficient are we when we use power? We measure it through WUE, water usage effectiveness. WUE. Yes. Okay. And then the last one is CUE, carbon usage effectiveness. Okay. So these are the three metrics that we track to ensure that when we run our data center operations, we're able to do it in a very, very efficient manner. Mm. And this redounds to obviously savings to the customers yes. uh, that we have and ensures that uh, they know that our sources of energy and the way we run our data center suits with their own ESG targets of okay. being green. So it's like you're saying, sir, uh, they don't have to read because there's really no fixed cost uh, uh, for some aspects because it really depends on how a business wants his uh, partnership with EPLDT to be like. Yes, yes. Um, I, I think the, the assurance we can give our customers is that the green agenda is number one in our mind. Okay. And we're, we're ensuring that all of the different aspects of running our business uh, has ESG um, and um, ensuring that carbon emissions are reduced. That's, it. That's, that's great to hear. And tell us more, sir, about the PLDT Group and its commitment to, to support the government's nationwide digitalization uh, thrust. And I think I say, we're moving forward, yes. with this, especially with this administration, into trying to integrate everything uh, online. Yes. Uh, so tell us more and more about your product, sir. Well, we're very supportive of the current administration's yes. thrust to digitalization or okay. for digitalization. And we are an avid supporter of the Go Digital Pilipinas yes, yes. campaign, okay. uh, which is under the um, Private Sector Advisory Council of mm -hmm. the President. Um, this group was really formed to be able to bridge the digital divide yes. by improving digital literacy and ensuring that we have a sustainable digital infrastructure in place. So we are supportive of that and the different initiatives that the uh, PISAC organization has put okay. in, in support. Um, secondly, um, we are also one in government in positioning the Philippines as the next transit and hyperscaler hub mm. of the region. I think what's happening now geopolitically is that there are tensions on the South China yes, Sea. Yes. Uh, because of so much data center build in Singapore, the government in Singapore has actually reduced the number of new data centers to be built there. Yeah. So they are now looking for alternatives as to where they build their next data centers for these huge global companies. Okay. And we're working with the government to ensure that um, uh, the Philippines and EPLDT is positioned as the next hyperscaler destination for Asia Pacific. Any timeline or idea, sir, how fast this would uh, 
with Girl? Oh, well, it's currently happening now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a lot of interest and discussions from the huge uh, Eastern and Western hyperskaters to look at the Philippines as their next destination to build very, very big zones uh, to accommodate their cloud uh, consumption. It's really exciting news and it's something to look forward to. Yes. And of course, sir, uh, any message to our business uh, viewers right now or uh, any updates? Uh, that they should expect or should be excited about with the uh, EPLDT. Yes, thank you, Diego. Well, um, I think just to just I just wanted to tell the audience today that the EPLDT is really positioned to be the digital uh, transformation partner of choice for enterprises. Uh, we can help large enterprises, uh, the government, public sector, and SMEs achieve their digital transformation aspirations. Um, we are outcome based and outcome focused. You know, we are not here to sell technology. We're here to understand what the pain points of our customers are and then provide the right solutions to be able to ensure that they hit their business targets. Um, so please uh, put your trust in PLDT the same way that you have trust in PLDT all these years for your connectivity solutions and services that we provided. A very reassuring message. Again, sir, thank you very much for joining us this early morning on One News Now. It's thank really you, a, an honor to have you with us. Maraming salamat, Maraming Diego. Salamat. And thank, uh, you. thank you very much for joining us, EPLDT President and CEO V-Boy Henwino.